journey of transformation and leadership, Mr. Cooley has conducted workshops related but not limited to leadership, authority, strategy, policy making to thousands of top business, government, education, NGO execs across the globe. He is currently the chairman and president of the Cambridge Institute for Global Leadership. He is also the go-to advisor for many senior state officials. Mr. Cooley is a World Bank Fellow, a senior international executive who lived in 22 different countries and led a diverse crowd of more than 47 nationality during his tenure at Reuters, where he served as a managing director for the Middle East and an executive board member of Reuters Continental Europe, Middle East and Africa. He was also a journalist who wrote hundreds of articles on various international subjects that were translated to several different languages and published on elite major newspapers in the world. He authored 12 books, including two Amazon bestsellers, Counting Your Hummus, Forget Happiness, and his latest book, This is Leadership. This is a quick intro in a nutshell about our guest speaker for today, Mr. Michael Cooley. For more information about his educational workshops, leadership community involvement, success stories, his foundation, publications and events, please do visit his website on www.cooleyinstitute.com. Thank you for tuning in and we hope you enjoy this special and first episode of our HR Prosa Drive experience. Mr. Cooley, the floor is all yours. Hello everybody, hi. I am um, very delighted to be with you today. Um, I think uh, our uh, evening is going to be a remarkable evening because of your presence and because of the subject. It's a critical subject and um, I would recommend and uh, encourage you to pay very good attention because uh, this is a subject uh, that I have been emphasizing on in the leadership simulations that uh, I have been conducting for the past 15 maybe plus years all over the world. Uh, these simulations are four day long, they are very intense, they are like two weeks in four days and some people regard them as the most intense, uh, one of the most at least if not the most intense leadership, um, executive leadership uh, educational programs in the world. It's like 16, 16, 17 hours a day uh, of transformational stuff. So we cover, we cover this, this subject, the subject of identity, self, and role extensively in uh, in this uh, in the simulation. And uh, most often, the comments that I get afterward, you know, sometimes I meet people who have attended uh, our leadership simulation for you know years after. Sometimes. Uh, they tell me, and I'm, I quote, uh, this particular subject has saved my life. Of course, I don't talk about this in a physical way, but professionally, emotionally, uh, in terms of exercising leadership, in terms of making it through the journey of life, this subject uh, has been an unforgettable part of the simulation. Identity, self, and role. This subject absolutely fascinates me. And it has helped me throughout my entire career, especially when I'm exercising leadership. And it has helped me also through my life in general. And I'm sure it will help you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go through each one of them, identity, then role, then self. Talk about how each of them is important and how relate to each other and how they relate to leadership and how they relate to the purpose, our ultimate purpose of survival and growth. Then... I'm going to open up for you know a few questions that can come from the crowd so that we can uh, we can make the best out of this conversation. I'm going to start by talking about identity. Identity is a super essential issue, super essential. And how do you know that? I'm sure you've heard the the, the subject the the title or the phrase I, people have identity issues. When people say that it means those who they're talking about they don't know where they're placed, they don't know who they really are. Because what's the definition of identity? What's identity? Identity is who you are, 
how you define yourself it is ho how you think about you and it's uh, and it's about how the world views you so these three elements who are you and who you are the way you think about yourself and how the world sees you how the world views you now why is this important having clear identity helps you create barriers having clear uh, and boundaries around you not barriers sorry H helps you create boundaries around you and when you create boundaries then your setup in life your position in life is defined and that has many benefits many privileges because it identifies you in many ways having clear identity also helps you satisfy your feeling of um, belongingness so you that that important instinct or that important drive or hunger or need that we have which is the need to belong um, set is satisfied or is covered by having a clear identity it also helps you by having a reference when you want to make um, to take decisions in life because you make decisions as per uh, your identity now when i talk about identity i'm talking about how you define yourself so I'm going to ask you a question so that we can go into the practical realm of this. If I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, who are you? I'll give you just takes just few seconds to think about this question. Who are you? How do you define yourself in life? If you want to complete the statement, I am so and so, how do you write it? What do you say? Take a few seconds to think about it because it's your own way of defining yourself. Now the answer to that, I want you to remember that answer. That answer is the way you have been defining yourself. That's what you have answered now is you have identified your identity. You have designed, you have formulated um, identity. Now, I will come back to this subject later on and you will see how it's all um, connected and I want you to remember the way you answered this, this question. Now, so the problem or the tricky issue with the issue of identity is that it is defined by others and it also can be defined by yourself. How is it defined by others? Let's say you are a male in a group of female people, in a club of you know, female people. They define you as the male. So if they want to talk about you, they, see, they say, let's say they say, they give a word, Sam or whatever, or some, you know, uh, unisex name. And the way they define who you are, when they want to talk about you, they say the man. So the group uses identity to define you. So it's controlled by whom? By others. It is also determined by the context. So let's say you are a French man in Germany. So how do they refer to you? In the context of Germany, you are the Frenchman. In the context of women, right, you are the man. In the context of men, you are the woman. In the context of, the, let's say, United States, if you are among Americans, you are the Chinese. So it depends on the context. And we have multiple identities in that aspect. So when you travel, uh, let's say you're in, your plane, in an airplane, you are a passenger. Uh, when you are when you land in your country you are a citizen your identity is a citizen when you are in university your identity is a student that's why where the word id card comes from id in fact means identity so your a citizen your id card at school is your identity as a student your id card in the country is your identity as a citizen your id card in a club is your identity as a club member so this is how it's determined by others, how they view you. And this is how it's determined by context. Now, the issue with this is that it changes. So as the context changes, you, your identity as perceived by others change. And as those people change, so if now in the room, if they're not men, they're women, your identity will change. You become one of them if you are a woman. And let's say if, you, if they change to become children, then you are the grown-up there. So it changes. But it's a dynamic thing. As others who identify you change, and as the context of their identification also changes. Now, this is a very important aspect. Why? Because we use identity as our anchor 
It's much deeper than this, but I'll tell you more about this in a second. We use our identity as what? As an anchor. So when you're defined as per an identity, your anchor is also changing. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are in a foreign country and you come from a different country that is, has a certain kind of image. Let's say you are in the States or you're in Europe and you come from Africa or you are in, from, come from the Middle East, you're an Arab. So the moment they say it is this Arab guy or the African guy or the black guy or the, you know, the gay guy or the old guy you know, or the military guy, what happens is that you also carry with that name with that identity all the emotional load and the framing and the prejudices that come with that term so when they look at you as you know, they give you an identity that has a negative load and because identity is so important to you there will be consequences for this because if the negative load is heavy then you will suffer from this the same way, if the Lord is positive, you will also enjoy it. So the reason I'm saying that is that the issue of identity is a very serious subject because the way we identify ourselves, it anchors us. It gives us stability. It defines us. And the way we're defined influences the way we think, the way we react, the way we behave, the way we interact, the way we feel. And it designs, in many cases, our destiny in that moment. Now, there is also the issue of identity that you give to yourself. And that's even more important than the identity that's given to you. How is that important? Because the way you define it yourself, especially at a deep, deep, deep level, almost determines your life. So if you define yourself, let's say, as a minority in a group, then what are you doing? You have, you have automatically put yourself in the mindset of a minority. And based on that, what will happen? Your actions, your behavior, your interaction will be determined. You will act as a minority. And you will use that as the limitation of the scope of your behavior. Of your, the, of your movement. Let's say you are a woman and you are in a corporate environment and you define yourself, you know, I'm the woman here. And that notion of a woman, you look at it as a source of weakness or as a source of a disadvantages, disadvantaged ad identity, then what you have done, you have already determined the scope of your limitations by saying, you know, I'm a woman, I will never go to the executive level. Or, you know, I, am, I have this sexual orientation, or I belong to this kind of class, or I am, you know, I'm an old person, this is a young environment, right? So I'm already having limitations of my age. So the, the, issue, the issue of you defining yourself, the way you define yourself, is super important in the way you shape your own destiny and in the way you allow yourself to exercise leadership. Because when you exercise leadership, all these identity issues, who you think you are, play into the element. Once I spent a good part of my life you know, st studying and teaching at, uh, at Harvard University, at the Kennedy School of Government and at the Harvard Business School. I remember having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine. Actually, he was a professor, but he came. I'll tell you what the context is. I said to him, you are a global thinker. You are a global thinker. So why don't you go to the, to the entire world? He said, oh, Michael, but I'm a minority. I think in ghetto terms. So what he, has, what, what he was telling me, this Harvard professor, my friend and colleague at the time, what he was telling me is that I have limitations or I have set limitations on how far or how wide or the scope of my interaction because he has defined himself as a minority. That's why the implications of the way you define yourself as a minority is super important because within that definition, you're already determining the boundaries of your destiny.
And when you exercise leadership, that's super important because let's assume you think of yourself as a minority, whether in terms of gender or age or education or class or color or religion, you name it, you, you name it, right? Let's say you define yourself in that way and you want to talk about or you want to consider the aspect of exercising leadership. Imagine the impact of that definition that you have on what? On your prospect of exercising leadership because you have already framed yourself within the limitation of the identity that you have taken for yourself. That's why the way we identify ourselves is super important. If you get out of all this introduction about the subject of identity, that identity is super important, that it is how the others view how others view you with all the limitations and the consequences and the pluses and minuses that come with that. More importantly, with the way you define yourself, with all the limitations, the consequences that come with that, right? And you understand that it's all contextual, it all depends on others, it all depends on your mood, it all depends on your baggage, on your wood, on your upbringing, the way you look at yourself. And this is always changing, especially when it comes from others and it's contextual, then you can understand why the issue of identity is super, super, super important. So let's put that on the side. So we've just covered now the headlines in general of what identity is and how important uh, it is for us. This has been, this was actually the introduction because I want to go now to the issue of self and role. Now, self and role th th that are, th that integrate into the concept of identity and I will tell you how. Self and role are super, super, super important concepts. Why they're so important? Because they go at the core of identity because most of the time, in fact, much of the time, if not all the time, unless you are very conscious at an intellectual and spiritual level, philosophical level, most of the time people identify themselves as their role. And when they mix that self and role, when they mix that, right, when identify themselves as per role, they with, in, instead of identifying themselves as per their self, and I will tell you later what self means, then that's a dynamite, that's an explosive interaction, that's an explosive position. Because if you identify yourself with what you really, you're not, with something that's not really solid, then you've just destabilized your life or you've put yourself in a high risk and exposure situation. I will explain to you more in detail. What is a role? Everything that you do in life is a role. Listen very carefully. Everything that you do in life is a role and we play multiple roles and Shakespeare the great poet has his this famous phrase life is a is a, is a is a play the world is a theater is a stage and we all are players on this stage and we change our roles from time to time one day you play the you know take it in your case one day you play the junior executive or uh, employee another day you play middle management then you play the ceo then the board member then you play unemployed then you play a husband whatever all of these roles are changing and we play multiple roles so being a father is a role being a husband is a role being a son a sibling a sister and a brother is a role i am guessing that part of the words or part of you when we when i ask you who are you how do you define yourself when i ask you to fill in the blanks i'm sure some of you define themselves as per uh, the role they play in their in their in their society in their family or the way the role they play in society or the, the role they play professionally so some of you and in the simulations i always ask this question and i get a variety you know over uh, from uh, of answers and i've done this over you know the past 15 20 years and i've asked this question to tens and tens of thousands of people ranging from you know junior executives up to board members and sometimes even heads of state i even once asked a president of a country how do you define yourself who are you and it took him like you know 30 seconds to understand it and uh, after 30 seconds he couldn't find the answer 
because it was a tricky question. I mean, for him, it was a difficult question, so he avoided the question. Of course, we talked about it later on. I was an advisor to that president, so I'll tell you more about it later on. But it's a heavy question. So I've seen all kinds of answers, from so-and-so to f father, to president, to CEO, to CFO, to HR director, to HR vice president for HR, whatever, chief human officer, you name it, uh, head of training, um, uh, whatever. Um, I'm, a, I'm a consultant, I'm a businessman, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, I'm a neighbor, I'm, I'm, I'm an American, I'm an uh, um, Emirati, I'm a Saudi, I'm a Qatari, I'm a French, I'm German, I'm Lebanese, whatever it is. All of these are roles and some of them are social contracts, constructs. So society has constructed them, right? Some of them are roles and some of them are social contracts constructed by society. They're like masks. I want you to imagine, you know, you in a room full of masks. And each, each mask displays a character. So what you do, you know, the, if, you, if, you, if you remember Chinese or Japanese opera, you see them how they change the mask, right? They want smiley or sad or crying or angry. So all of these roles are changing all the time. So we have multiple roles. Now, what's the problem with this? The problem with this issue is that most of us make our roles our identity. I used to do that. In my professional career, I worked for like around 17 or 16 years with Reuters in 22 countries. And my job moved from being a war correspondent to the president and the CEO for Reuters in the Middle East. And I covered more than 22 countries, you know, um, through my, I mean, through my this assignment and in previous also assignments. So I used to define myself, I remember this very well, I used to define myself as, hi, I'm Michael from Reuters. I used to do that without understanding what I was doing. I was so taken by the role, because I'm so passionate about leadership and exercising leadership, I was so taken by the role that I've made it my identity. Now, what's the danger of that? The danger of that is the following. Number one, I'm not Michael of Reuters. I'm Michael Cooley, that's number one. Number two, all roles are temporary. All roles, you name it. Give me a role and I challenge you. You'll see it's temporary. Right? So all roles are temporary. In what sense? Today you are an HR director. Give it for a few more years. Either you, you'll be promoted or your job will end. The company might close. You know, they might ask you to leave you might get into retirement and one day you will not be an HR director. Your role is a CEO. One day you will not be a CEO because either you will or ever. You will ask to leave or you will resign or something will happen that you will make you leave or the company will close or the market conditions will change. Somebody else will buy the company or you get your retirement age and you leave. So you name it. Now today you are a father. One day your kids will leave. Now, officially, of course, you'll be father, but if your son is, you know, like 6,000 miles away, entitled, you are a father, but do you wake up every day exercising your fatherhood? No, your role as a father will diminish at that time. Your role as a husband, okay, today you're a husband, but one day, I mean, God forbid, let's say you might divorce, and once you divorce, you're not a husband anymore, or your spouse might, you know, might uh, go away or might die. Then you become a widow, and the same thing for a for a wife. Your husband might one day is no more there, so you become a widow. Uh, your uh, sibling, you might lose your uh, uh, your brother and sister, or you might, you know, have some relational problems, and some people don't end up don't talking to their siblings for years. So you're not actually playing that role anymore. So you name it. You're a son now. You lose your mom and dad and you're not a son anymore so you name it and I will show you how that ends I mean take the president Obama is a role right he used to be a president for eight years now no more Queen Elizabeth she's playing a role when she's you know executing their uh, her royal duties at home she's plays the role of a wife with her husband with her kids she plays the role of a you know of uh, of a mother so that's the issue with roles. Eventually, they will have what? They will disappear. They will end because all roles end. And now, if you make your role your identity and then your identity disappeared, what will happen to you? The entire foundation where you're standing on 
disappeared. Now, one day came after I finished my assignment with Reuters, after you know 16 or 18 years, uh, I was 37 or 36 as the CEO of that place, and I saved my time for three years. And then, I, then my time changed, and I, you know, the opportunity in front of me, ahead of me, was to go to some other faraway places. And I've decided that time that I don't want to go there because I had, you know, enough of an international life, and I wanted to settle down and start a family. So one day, happened that I woke up and I was not the CEO of Reuters anymore. Now, if I have identified myself as the CEO of Reuters, that made that my identity. And then that role, for some reason, in my hand or because of other elements, right, uh, disappeared. So what happened to me? And I know cases, and I'm sure you know cases, where people after retirement, they became sick, they became depressed. And there are also statistics that people after retirement, especially those who had identified themselves with their role, what happened? They end up dying prematurely. Why? Because that role was giving them meaning. And when that meaning disappeared, there was no, at a deep, deep subconscious level, reason for their existence. I know, I've heard the stories where couples, you know, a spouse dies, then after a year or two, uh, the other part, the other partner disappear. I know uh, stories where um, somebody, you know, they lose their job, and because they have identified themselves so much with that job, so what happens? Their entire life collapses and they lose their marriage. I know people who end up being, ended up being homeless because they lost the role that they were, they were playing. I know people who have been for the past 20 years without a job because at a certain time uh, when they were at the peak of that job, they were asked by the company to leave. And because that role was made at an emotional deep level, their identity, they made it by that. They made it, they personally made that. When that role was gone, there was nothing left. And they're still stuck there. There is a vacuum there. And I know them, and I know the consequences of that, you know, on their family, the relationship with their kids, with their spouses, you know, and with their health. And they became sick, and they start adding weight. And some of them, till today, till today, right, uh, they haven't found jobs. Not because they're not competent, but they can't see themselves in other jobs. Why? They, they have, because they had framed themselves in the role that they used to give them identity. Now, why did they do that? Because that role satisfies some emotional and psychological hungers and needs within them. It gave them pride. It gave them, you know, sense of belonging. It gave them prestige. It gave them power. It gave them whatever, whatever they were hungry for. So that disappeared. Vacuum was created and their entire life was shattered. That's why, as I said to you, identity is super important. And that's why when you make roles, your role super important and make it as your core identity, you're really standing on quicksand. And sooner or later, something will happen because that's the nature of life. Everything comes to an end. And when that hits you, because you have, you're standing on a very thin, thin, thin layer, right, then the consequences, consequences will be very, very serious to you. Now, the other thing is that identities are volatile. So they're not just temporary, they're volatile. Today you're doing that job, tomorrow you're doing another job, today you're in this country, tomorrow is in that country, right? And you name it, they're completely volatile. Why is volatile? Because they're also controlled by others. Whoever gave you that role can take that role away or can reshape or at all, or can redefine it. So they're, 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 they're temporary and they're volatile and they're always come to an end. All these elements create a feeling of uncertainty, create a feeling of um, ambiguity, and they indirectly create anxiety. And it's a very dangerous strategy. You people usually uh, unknowingly or without having enough consciousness use. Why? Why? because it feeds them and, and they make it their identity, right? So that they find their place in life. But sooner or later, as you can see from life, I mean, look around you, look at what happened last year, the year before, whatever, God knows what will happen in the coming years. Life is unpredictable, nothing is certain. You stand, you put your entire stability at emotional, spiritual, psychological level, uh, emotional and mental stability uh, on a shaky ground, sooner or later, no questions asked. Something will happen that will shake you uh, from inside. 
Now, the other element is that it is controlled by others, so people can use it to manipulate you. I'll tell you a story. This is, of course, all my stories are real examples. I don't want to name names, uh, mention names because of, you know, identity, because of, you know, c confidentiality issues. I know somebody who is a, who is a managing director of a company in a, in a hardship country. In a, I'll say it, Saudi Arabia. He hired people. He hired, I know, a specific person. He hired the, per he hired the person to play a certain role. That role was a sales role. Okay, stay with me. Now, the assignment was that this person would go to this country, Saudi Arabia, and play that role for two years. At the end of these two years, guess what happened? This manager or this boss, the president of that company, changed, he offered to change the title of that person. So instead of calling him sales, he called him senior sales on condition that he stays for another two years. Now, the word senior has an ego advantage, it, it, at least from the surface. It means that you are, from the ego position or the hierarchy, you're doing a more important job. At the core, it was the same job, but senior. So that guy accepted. Why? Because that word seniority, right, being a senior th person, sales, senior salesperson, fed his ego, fed his need to be identified and to belong to a higher group. Psychologically, it fed him. And because he was making that identity, he accepted. Two years finished. Then he said, you know what? I will make you now business executive. Now, guess what? The title business executive does not exist. And this person created this title because he understood what the psychology of that employee just to make, make, him, make him stay in that hardship country. Of course, now I, mean, I hear that Saudi Arabia is not a hardship country anymore in many ways, right? Because life has developed there. Um, from a you know, social and professional point of view. So at that time, it was a very hardship country. He accepted. And he came to that manager and said, what's this title? Is this title important? He said, of course important. Business executive. And you're the only person who will have that. Said, Is it more important than sales, senior sales executive? He said, of course more important. So he accepted to stay two more years, now six years. True story. Uh, stay with me. And then he said, after the two years, he said, you know what? Why don't we consider I move you to another city and you become senior business executive? I'm not, I'm not joking. Same thing happened. Now we're eight years. And then he said to him, if you stay two more years, I'll make you sales manager. Ten years was taken from that person's life because of what? A change of few words on a business card. At the core of the job itself, that person kept doing exactly the same thing. What were these things? Taking care of, I don't know, some portfolio of accounts that he had to you know, pay attention to and sell to and keep and you know what salespeople do. So this is the power of identity and this is the power of making your role your identity. Be very careful about that. Be very careful about that. I'll tell you why. And I want you to open your eyes and ears very well. Huh? Be very careful about that. Listen very carefully. Roles succeed and fail. Roles succeed and fail. You don't succeed and fail. I call, I talk you here when I say you, I'm talking you as the real you, the deep you. And I'll tell you what that means. Listen carefully. If your, pro, if your career failed, if your job, you were given an assignment as a certain assignment, given a promotion, and it was doomed, it was decided that you have failed in this assignment. That does not make you, underline big you, as a failure. Technically, you could not do or satisfy the requirement that job, of that job, right, as it was expected. And maybe even the expectations were too, fa were too f uh, harsh and unrealistic. And maybe also um, that person's judgment was too harsh. So if you accept that the failure of your role is your failure, you will be devastated. The same thing about your relationship. If your relationship fails, that does not make you a failure. If your marriage fails, does not make you at the core you as a human being a failure. If your country fails, right, does not make you as a citizen a failure. If you are a parent, as a parent, your kids or whatever people tell you that you failed as a parent. It might be true that technically speaking, you did not perform that role well. But that does not make you a failure. 
If your siblings are not happy with the role that you're playing as a brother or a sister, that does not make you a failure. If your what? If your children, if your children judge you as a bad parent, quote unquote, that does not make you a failure. If your spouse says to you that you're not a good husband or partner, or a, that does not make you a failure. If your friends are not happy with you, the same thing. Now, I am not saying that you should not pay attention to your role. You should play your role to the fullest. This is your moral, professional, human, ethical duty. You have to do that. You absolutely have to do that. It is your role, it is your responsibility, ethical responsibility, to do that to the fullest. You have to do that. But things happen. And sometimes we do things in a suboptimal way. Now, society will judge us. Other people will judge us. Their judgment might be accurate or their judgment might not be accurate. Right? It doesn't matter. If that happened, you should not internalize it to you, within you, and project all that, that your entire being has, been fa has failed. Why is this important? Because I know people who have been completely devastated when one of their roles has failed, technically has failed. And this happens because you can't be perfect in everything. I tell you why it's important. Because, okay, you might be a bad employee or a suboptimal employee, but you might be a great brother, a great son, a great father, a great neighbor, a great friend. You might be, you know, a lousy husband or wife, but you might be a brilliant sister. You might do this job uh, horribly, but you might do another job in a more, you know, in a more beautiful way. So keeping this in mind is so important because I'll tell you what, in life there will be things that you will do that they will fail. Not because there's something wrong in you, because you can't be perfect in everything. That's number one. Number two, because also sometimes we're not perfect. Sometimes you do things in a suboptimal way. So these things will happen. I hope they don't happen, but they will happen. If you don't protect yourself from inside, then you're in deep trouble because you will position yourself as failed. I know people who never recover from a failed relationship, not even marriage. I know people who never recover from a relationship that lasted six months. I've heard people who get engaged for three months, three weeks, and then the, the, the relationship collapse, and it's like seven years now, and they're still depressed. It happens. I know people who have committed suicide. I mean, I'm sure you've heard about these people. After they've been fired, or after they've been let go. I know people who have committed suicide after they've been bullied, or I heard of at least people, or, or after they've been divorced, or when their relationship uh, broke up. So point is, we, in life, we play multiple roles. Everybody does that. Some of these roles will be successful and some of these roles will be failures. These are just roles. They are very important part of what we do. Super important. But you have to distinguish that from your true core self. From your true core self. Otherwise, if you internalize it and to make that failure, the failure of the entire being, I'm telling you from now, you will collapse you will collapse. And I've seen that happening all the time. Clear? So that's point. Now, the same thing applies on success. Exactly the same thing applies on success. Let's say you did something and absolutely brilliant. You were super successful in this. You were euphoric. You were dancing. And it was outstanding success. Now, do you have the right to be said to celebrate? Of course you have the right to celebrate. Dance. Do whatever you have to do, you know, be happy, do, you, know, you name it, right? But remember, you've succeeded in that role and you should enjoy your role, that role, that success to the maximum. But if you internalize it so deeply, right, if you take it beyond the success of that role, what happens? Your ego will be exposed. Your ego will be exposed. And once your ego is exposed, one, it gets into your head. Once that technical success that is justified and you should be celebrated, appreciated and respected, once that happens, what will happen to you? Now you've lost khalas, you've lost your, uh, your balance, you've lost the way, you lost your sanity, you lost your common sense. You, look, you will look at things through overconfidence, through, uh, through uh, the illusion of you know, excessive power that you're invincible and whatever that is. And then life, of course, has its own way of waking you up, slapping you on the face, right? When you fail in other things that come down, my friend, come down, come down. 
right? I mean, you grow up and come down to the ground. Enough of lying in La La Land. So why is this important? Because in whatever role you're, you're, ladies and gentlemen, you're playing, some of these roles you'll be successful and some of these roles you'll, be, you'll, be, uh, you'll, you'll fail. Keep it in that perspective and make sure that you don't make it at the core of your identity. Otherwise, you're really living a turbulent life all the time. Now, let's go to the self-issue. The self-issue. Who are you? Now, this is a long subject. It we can go spiritual. We can go spiritual. You can go spiritual and we can take it to the corest possible level. Who are you? One of the definition of self, one of the great definition of self that I really like is um, a definition of self by Carl Jung, one of the greatest psychologists. He talks about the self as the following. Yourself, what, what's yourself? Yourself is your entire being. That includes your conscious being and your subconscious being. It is what you're made of in your, at a holistic level. Everything about you is yourself. And if you go deep, 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 deep spiritually, what are you? If you talk in a spiritual language, your pure soul, your pure spirit. And in many religions, in many religions, at a spiritual level, you carry the spirit of the divine, the spirit of the creator, the spirit of God, right? That's in many religions. And billions of people believe that. So bottom line is that you, wherever you are, at your core, you are a human being. That's who you are. You are a human being. Why is this important? Why you should keep this important? Because you have to make that your anchor. Show any anchor. What does anchor mean? You're, you have to make that your point of gravity that stabilizes you. So that when your role messes up, right, you remember that you're still anchored. You're still anchored. You're unshakable. I must told the story of a guru who was in a press conference absolutely bitterly attacked by journalists. Bitterly attacked by journalists. Now what happened after the entire press conference was over? A friend told me this. She said she looked at the mirror and looked at herself in the mirror and she said, I looked at my eyes and I saw my soul was completely intact. Completely intact. Nothing touched my soul from outside. I did not leave anything that to go inside. That's why it said it said don't let you know compliments go into, into your head and don't let criticism go, go into your heart. What does that mean? Don't let them go to your core so that they don't stabilize you. Because what these things are saying are saying what is perceived from the outside. Your core should always be intact. You are a human being with all what that entails, with your imperfections, with your brilliance, with your journey of learning, with your failures, with your, with your uh, mess, with your blessings, with, with the beauty you create, with the mess that you create. That's who you are. And that all is valuable, that's priceless, that's bigger than any role, that's bigger than your power, that's bigger than your prestige, that's bigger than your position, that's bigger than your popularity, that's bigger than having a million followers or having, you know, being the CEO or the president or the king or having billions of dollars or being in the media all the time, you know, and being seen as a very powerful person. These things are super important, they are important. But these things are volatile. Today are here and tomorrow they're not here. And because life is unpredictable. So when you keep, you make sure that your true self is in your, right? Is, you make your true self your true identity. I'm a human being. I, I, represent, I manifest uh, the spirit of the divine, let's say. I, whatever, you use your own language to go as deep as you can when you want to describe your core, then you are in a much, much, in a much, much better position then you are in a better position. Now, why is this important? As I said to you, because life is a journey of endurance. It's an endurance race. Life is full of surprises. Life is, you know, as Gibran Khalil Gibran said, you know, a tear and a smile. And in my view, it's like, you know, no, many tears and maybe occasional smiles. That's how life has become. That's how life is. You have to be ready for all these situations and you have to maintain your balance, your sanity, your equanimity, your, 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 uh, your uh, 
clear thinking in all these stages of life, in all the turbulences of life, in all the joys, in all the dips, in all the highs, in all the lows, so that what happens, so that you can continue and live a fulfilling, um, um, a full, um, exciting, worthy, exceptional, exuberant journey, journey of life. Um, one last point I want to say, and this is also super important in my view, people deal with you as per your role. I want you to reflect on this. When people love you, they love you because the role that they play, you're playing in their life. You end up playing a different role that is not favored by them. What happens? Their feelings will change. Today you are a good brother, tomorrow you are a bad brother. Today you are a great friend, tomorrow you are a bad, you're a bad friend. In my corporate life, I have taken decisions, right? corporate decisions, business decisions, that for many people, they made me the hero. You know, they put my pictures on their desk, and you name it, you name it. Now, was this about really about me? No, of course it was about me. It, about, it was about the impact of the role that I played in their life. That role, right, that role played, uh, took a decision that was in their own personal interest. And as a result, they were absolutely adorable. They used to carry my show, my briefcase open, you know, royal treatment, absolute royal treatment. And give it a few months, and as a CEO, you take another decision that's not in their interest, then it completely flips. So wherever people, I mean, let's say your partner, you're married, you treat your spouse in the most loving way, as a queen or as a royalty or as a king. What's the, what's, what's the reaction to that? Absolute, you know, happiness and joy and uh, give me more and I love you and I adore you, the whole thing. You are the same person. Start abusing and mistreating your partner. What happens to you anymore, from now on? Then? What happens to you when you do that? What happens? The entire perception changes and you have turned from being an adorable person to absolutely disastrous, vicious, villain, malevolent, you know, horrible, horrible person. So the way the world look at you is as per the role that you play in their life. And you need to keep that in mind and not let it go into your, into your heart, into your soul from inside, because it reflects what they think, it reflects what they're coming from, it reflects their perception of things. It has nothing to do with you. That's why I'm telling you, don't be fooled by popularity. Don't be fooled by power. And you know that from the power dynamics. You are a normal staff, then okay, people like bar barely look at you. You become a boss, then the entire dynamics change. You become the CEO, then the whole world changes. And the next day you're not a CEO anymore, they, didn't, they can't even, you'll be lucky if they say hello, if they see you in the street. And I've seen that from people. One day, you know, they were president or they were generals and, you know, the most whatever, their phone would not stop ringing. Then the next day, right, they lost their job, then the phone doesn't ring anymore. Where did that respect go? <laughs> it, 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 was, it was never for the job. And I remember it was for the, it was never for the person, it was for the role himself. And I remember in, uh, in an occasion, I think pre, um, King Abdullah of Jordan mentions this when he calls, when he recalls, uh, his experience with his uh, late father, King Hussein. He says, he talks about a lesson, and the lesson is the following. He said his father told him, he mentioned that at a Harvard lunch uh, many, many years ago, after he became king. He said his father told him, son, never believe for a moment that you're the king. Whoever sits on that chair is the king. Don't let it get into your head. And there's a phrase, very important phrase, we know about it, that explains that. You know, the king has died, long live the king. It's one sentence. There's not even a comma between them. The moment the king has died, immediately it was replaced by somebody else. Long, long live the king. Who talks about Obama now? Nobody. Who talks about George Bush Jr.? Nobody. Who talks about Bill Clinton? Nobody. When they were president, you know, entire cities will be closed when they used to visit some countries. Now they're just normal citizens. They have to, you know, stand in the queue or whatever. Be just get normal treatment. So the point is, people treat you as per their your role and as per the perception of their role, and as per the impact of their role in their life. Never, 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 never let it go inside because it's so volatile. And if you let it go into your head, when that changes, you will be completely destroyed. If you make yourself worth, right? dependent on how people perceive you from the outside, although 
that is very important if you take it that to that core level then you're in dangerous position because one day things will change and people's perception will change either of you or of the role that you're playing and you will suffer now all of what i've said is important for your journey as a person as an individual as a professional right in your career in all aspects of your life in your journey of survival and growth all of this multiply by 100 when it comes to leadership because in leadership you are at the you know at the at this at the center stage when you exercise leadership the spotlight is on you you get all the attention and whatever you do is visible by everybody and has ripples around you all every all all the place or everywhere and some of the things that you will do when you exercise leadership will please others and they will follow you to the to the death in that context because what they're doing what you're doing is is perceived to be in their interest and at the same time some other people will hate you now and they will express that and when you make decisions that are so painful they will seriously express that seriously express that i had in my career when i was you know um, i played the role of a ceo and multiple times i had to take decisions where i had to let go of hundreds and hundreds and sometimes thousands of people now it's a very difficult decision now the staff people don't know that I had to fight and use my all my you know credentials and my political capital and reputation and relationships with the board to the for months so that instead of making it you know 1000 I make it like 700 so I save as many jobs as I can people don't know that but in the end when you do it all of this is irrelevant to them but when you have to do that, you have it, and your role is to make difficult decisions. That's why leadership is hard. You have to take difficult decisions. When you do that, you can imagine the reaction. You can imagine personal hatred. Sometimes, even in my cases, I receive death threats. Now, I'm not talking about the emotional blackmail, emotional pressure. I mean, you, you become the most hated person. And you're only doing your job. Now you must let you have you let go a few hundred people, but you save like ten thousand other people, right? People don't care. It's also and it's their right to do that. You can hundred percent understand it, and maybe you do the same in other contexts. But that's how human nature is. Now, if you don't keep the issue of identity, self, and role clear in your mind, if you don't know how to differentiate them, if you don't make your core self your identity, and put things in the perspective of your role, then you will be absolutely devastated. Devastated. It's very difficult to face resistance and hatred and, you know, and tension uh, all the time. And just open, you know, just look at, I mean, let's talk, go to TV. In your country, in, I mean, let's take the United States. The president of the United States, I'm not talking politics, doesn't matter whether you like him or not. I mean, every single day, people love him and people absolutely they crucify him every single day imagine if he takes all that in you know one day two days three days four days one month and then you get to the point that from inside you're totally empty you're destroyed because it gets to you if you don't know how to make these distinctions and you don't know how to protect yourself in your country whatever country you are Sometimes they praise the leader so much that, you know, you, he has to, he thinks himself or herself that they're one step away, you know, from God. In other cases, they look at, you know, their parents and children, they look at what's on TV and the way people are just cutting them into pieces. It destroys the entire family. So by keeping these concepts in mind, you know, the difference between, oh, sorry, between sorry, and identity, self and role, and making sure that you always, always put your anchor in yourself, understand how you protect that self, the beautiful self, that is absolutely, you know, a miracle of being, a miracle in the, at the universal level, because so far we've never seen, to our knowledge, something as miraculous as what a human being can be about. Of course, now we do horrible things, but we also do amazing things. It's beautiful to be a human being. And it's beautiful to accept the, what be a human being is all about. So you protect that, you cherish that, and you shield yourself from that, and then you exercise leadership. And then me, then your chances of success are better. Equally important, more importantly, and I'm closing now, your chances of surviving and growing in life are um, are uh, are much more now. 
I have to stop now because I spoke more than what I was planning to um, because I love this subject I absolutely love this subject because I've seen the impact that understanding this has made on people how it has saved them um, uh, in as they go through the dips and the highs and the lows of their life at the personal professional relational you know you name it level and in the leadership simulation that we do the one that I talked about because it's a simulation it's just not a normal course you know it's not a classical thing it's an experience by itself it's an unforgettable experience by itself uh, um, we go through this to the deepest level I mean we really go through this deep and I don't let people leave before this is really understood and that's why I keep getting these feedbacks that you know that statement that you made this subject that you talked about has really saved us saved me after I was fired I, I was retired I've lost my marriage I lost my health I lost my friends so and so and so happened uh, people attacked me I exercised leadership I was marginalized you name it um, um, so it is an amazing thing so I have to stop here in the interest of time and the interest of my energy also it's eight o'clock I've been Actually, we've been engaged in creative work in my here my uh, we call it think studio in my office, and we've been doing um, you know um, we or write books here and do research about uh, leadership and strategy and um, you know understanding systems, organizations, growth. So uh, we've been engaged in creative work for the past I don't know 14 hours, and you can see I'm uh, I need more energy, so I'll stop here, um, and I want to move to the. To, to the questions so that I can answer more specific questions but I want your compassion also now because um, I have to go I have other engagements it's already nine o'clock here nine or three it says um, so I'll take maybe two or three questions because this is an endless subject uh, we can always talk about this in other occasions if you had the opportunity to attend the leadership simulation um, uh, we will go much much deeper into this and um, and experience it to the fullest it's really it's one of the most important aspects of understanding uh, how to exercise leadership and how to make it in life how to survive and to and to grow so thank you very much for your attention i know it's a heavy subject i hope you know at the end of this day long day i hope i've made it clear enough and now i open the floor for um, your question Thank you so much, Michael. This was amazing. I know. Because it changed my life. I know, I really mean it. It changed my life because in the, uh, in the spikes up and down of my life, because you can't control life. I mean, things happen to you. As you can see now, Corona, economy, you name it. So this has maintained my sanity. So I know it's amazing. And definitely it will uh, change the life of many after this session. I definitely hope so, because it did change the lives of many. It's not easy, but you have to, you know, keep this in mind. Because, um, where is it? I'll show you something. This is the book. It, it's my first book. I wrote it to my kids. It became an Amazon bestseller and uh, required learning in many, uh, in many schools and uh, and many schools and organizations they forced they asked everybody to read it I'll just take show you something where is it um, I'll tell you what's the first word is okay let's see if you can read can you read what's the first word that says shift happens okay so I wrote it shift actually it's a polite way of saying something else so shift or shoot or something else it's a bad word happens in life so when shift happens in your life right um, you have to be pre you have to be ready and strong from within you emotionally and intellectually and spiritually strong otherwise it will cut you into pieces especially when you exercise leadership especially when you do that my god no mercy tell me Anyone has any question for Michael? I think they're all under shock now, or <laughs> or, <laughs> or they're revising their life, or um, ah, remember also, don't believe what they tell you when they when they give you this feeling of importance, 
Don't believe that. It's all about the roles. You know, in one of my assignments, I used to have once, I used to get 22 birthdays. It, when it was my birthday, when I was a CEO at Reuters in the Middle East, so I used to travel, having you know, being in charge, you have to go visit all the countries. In the months of my first birthday, 22 countries, 22 birthdays, right? I mean, uh, gifts, you name them, right? It's like I'm the most lovable person. Now ask me how many people remind my, remind, rem remember my birthday the year after I finished my assignment and I moved to somewhere else. Zero. Actually one. There's somebody from Tunisia. He's becoming my, he's became my friend now. His name is Najmuddin. So he, every, every birthday he calls me. The rest, I'm talking about hundreds. Zero. Absolutely zero. So whoever sits on that chair, that gets, he gets the compliment. It's about the chair. It's not about you. That's why stay humble. Mr. Khouri, can I uh, have to speak? Khouri. Go ahead. K-O-U-L-Y. Okay. First, thank you for the session. It was an amazing topic. Thank you. Now, can you tell us how would you answer the question, who you are after this session? Me? About me as a person? Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Let us learn from your experience how we can answer such a question. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'm going to answer. You have to go to my YouTube channel because I made a special somebody in an interview asked me this i tried to run to escape it but i couldn't anyway but i'll, an I'll answer you uh, who i am i'm going to answer it at the different levels huh at the core 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 level core level i'm a vessel that contains the spirit of the divine i contain the spark of life itself so i am a manifestation of life let me take it further and I'm saying that not just as Michael as a human being so you also are the same and I can see your picture you're beautiful so what's your name sorry it was muted my name is Hiba. Ahlan, Hiba. So you're, you're nice saying picture. that so, we so should define ourselves in terms of a human of course so so so, so, so not on, not only human not only human i see myself as a vessel that contains the spark of life of the divine and i see myself as a human being as the most amazing creation of life itself if everything around us that is alive is a form of life then what could be a more a beautiful manifestation of that life than being a human being absolutely miraculous now unless we discover somewhere else god knows in some other planet that the people who are at much more sophisticated than us um, then that's another story but still um, i mean look at us as human beings look at all this beauty that we've created look at the way we created art and science and we're now going to mars and look at the love and the compassion and the poetry and shakespeare and rumi and jubran and and Feyruz and uh, you name it and so so you in all all fields all of that is who we are who we are all of that is you and me and is every other person is you Hiba is me Michael now add to that right add to that add to that and in in some of the holy scriptures they say God created people at their own liking right and on our liking and um, whether you believe or not that's a different subject i'm talking about the scripture and then other religions uh, they say when god created people he blew his own spirit you know he breathed exhaled his own spirit into that creature but now by this we are all the same of course we're all the no. same at that level wait then when, where is our identity uh -huh. this, is, this is the reason behind my question if I am a human and you are a human, where is my Heba's identity? Where is yours identity? Where I can identify myself, okay. make myself unique? Okay. You know, we are unique. Okay, no one is similar to Beautiful, 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 Heba, beautiful. So, first layer, when everything challenges you, when you're, the whole world is trying to break you and destroy you, Right, in many different forms, not as a conspiracy, but because the, that's the nature of the world, you know. 
Nature is against you. Age is against you. You become older and you die. Nature is against you. Where the weather, so dis diseases. Wait. Our wait, wait, Heba. So, right? you, wait. So you remind yourself all the time when you're shaken from all all different uh, sides that inside that's who you are and that is extremely valuable so never ever 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 drop your own appreciation of your own dignity as a human being you never drop your love of yourself not egoistic love your appreciation of yourself as an expression the most beautiful expression of life as a human being now that's one layer now as another add another layer let's take a talk about Hiba or any other listener Add to this Hiba all that you have learned in life, all the talents that you bring, all the experiences that taught you, all the beauty that you can create, all the uh, success that you have uh, created that benefited so many people, all the smiles you put on people. And add to that all the lessons that you have learned, your capacity to learn and your capacity to put your failures and the lessons from your failure into your successes, into your experiences and to create an amazing life and to translate that into beautiful interactions that could add a blessing and add, you know, add b dignity and add um, gifts to other people's life. Now add to all that as well, add to that as well, the potential that you have. So at core, you are the most beautiful form of life. That's number one. That's, level, that's at the core. That, that's the inner circle. Uh, the outer circle is Hiba as you are now in terms of everything that you've learned, your successes, your learned, learned lessons, your, your, your failures, your experiences and everything that is helping you now create the beauty that you are creating or you've created so far. Now that's the second one and that also deserves appreciation. The third one is the potential that you have, is everything that you can be the times 10, 20, 50 that you can do in terms of adding beauty to the world, adding value to the world, making the world and making other people's life more beautiful, even with a smile, even with a hug, even with help, even with assistance, even by listening to somebody, even by not judging, even by controlling your anger, your temper, anything that you could do uh, to grow as a human being in your amazing potential that is unbelievably expansive and wide compared to what you have done so far is also part of you so you are the most beautiful soul of the divine of you know life itself the spark of life and then you are Hiba now and you are Hiba all the Hiba that you can be with all the beauty that that can create now will there be mess tears um, uh, failures you know uh, mistakes with that of course that will be that 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 will come with it why will that come because that's how we learn because that's also part of being who we are and our beauty we are appreciated by love by the divine and by people who love you not just the divine people who love you they love you who for everything that you are all the beauty that Hiba creates or anybody else and all the mistakes and the mess that you create for the fact that you are a human being that the, so that's who you are and you keep this in mind all the time and the more you're challenged I will, I the, will. the more you're challenged Hiba you more the more you go to the to your core and remind yourself of the fact that you are a vessel that contains the spark an amazing spark of life okay dear, thank you a lot uh, I have a question your name? My name is Shermin. Shermin. I'm an HR professional. Hi, Shermin. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, I would like to ask you, how can someone know him herself when we all know that we are labeled today by all the conditioning since we were in our mother's wombs by society, uh, by our schools, by our friends? How can someone know him, his, his true himself without the label of the society and the roles that we are given, etc., etc.? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, There's the short answer and the slightly longer answer. The short answer is you have to come and attend the simulation. And I'm not doing this as a commercial uh, exercise, not at all, because everybody in my family and whoever I know I have attended it many times because we go deep into answering that because this is not uh, 
you have to experience the answer to that. You have to see it yourself. You have to see it yourself. That's why it's experiential and we call it a simulation. And that's why it's so tough. That's why we cry and you cry when you discover who you are and how beautiful you are. But to answer, to give you the longer question, uh, as I said to you, um, um, between brackets, listen to this again. We're going to post this and I'm sure it will be on, uh, on I will put it on our my video, my YouTube channel, and it's going to be on YouTube, on uh, Facebook as well. So, so listen to this again because the answer was there. But l let me just paraphrase some of the, you know, summarize what I've said. This is a fact of life that we will be judged and and uh, and appraised, and you know they do performance appraisal, right? Which is a form of judgment. Well, let me tell you something. Everybody is doing performance appraisal to you all the time. They're doing it at home, in society, family, mom, dad, husband, partner, boyfriend, children, you know, the whole thing. If you have kids, sometimes your kids will tell you you're not a good mom or dad just because you didn't buy them, you know, six ice creams because, you know, it will hurt them. So you're almost, always in performance appraisal. So that will always happen. And some people will be happy with you. Some people will not be happy with you. And your mom and dad will raise you with the best intentions but they will also pass on to you all their insecurities and scars you know the, your mom and dad can raise you with the mindset you know with the uh, give you the identity that you're a minority or that you're a woman that you cannot do this and that you're you know a Lebanese or you're Arab or you're black or you're white or you're a, you know gay or whatever that is right and with all limitations that come with that so they tell you they frame you into that and that will happen that happens, it's normal, right? Now, with the best intentions, when they do that, they're also limiting you. And some other parents raise their kids, they tell them you can do anything in life and you know, don't care about people's opinion and just you know, have, discover your purpose and then have a plan in your life and go for it and grow and you can do better and you will do amazing things and you will be a blessing to the world and so many other things. So it depends on the context of your upbringing. That you cannot control because you can't control your society, you can't control your parents, right? You can't even sometimes control your school when, you're, when you go there. So you will be conditioned. So how is that, how can you could get over that? By remembering what I just told you in the session that you always remind yourself of who you are at a core level. So you listen to all that, you accept it, right? You accept it. If you are, let's say you are ever, you are you're Lebanese and you are in, the, in France and they look at you as Lebanese, you can't change that. You're Lebanese. Okay. So how can you change that? It's part of reality. The same way you look at a French person as a French. Right? That's fact, part of reality. But you keep it at that level. You keep it at the role of interaction that's very necessary. Right? And the dynamics that go with that. But you never ever let it go into your inside. Because let's say tomorrow you're not a Lebanese anymore. Or you're not French anymore. Does that make you a nobody? Right? Shermin? Does not make you a nobody. Palestinian people lost their, you know, country. Does that make them a nobody? So other people were, you know, were, com were, were persecuted and went through genocide. Does that, does that make them a nobody? Uh, people lost their money and job. Does that make them a nobody? So you never let anything that's given to you from outside stick to you in terms of identity because it can be taken away from you in a second. You remind yourself that you are a wonderful creation of the divine you are a human being even if you don't believe in any spiritual things just go to united nations the human the the charter or the bill of human rights and see the rights that has been given to you by the biggest authority in the world that's the united nations right the biggest constitution and that gives you a right for the fact of being a human right that alone is enough so read that and understand your rights right and that alone will give you a sense of pride and nobody should take that from you. No father, no boss, no husband, no country, no authority, uh, no children, no friends, no brothers, no sisters. Nobody takes that from you. Now, to do that, you have to elevate your level of consciousness and start thinking of yourself at that level. That's why I said you need to go deeper than this. We need to really experience this, this so that you can you integrate it into your thinking and you start living by this. Otherwise, it becomes shallow and with time and all the noise around you forget about it and then start the world start tossing you around by judging you giving you labels saying you you're that you're that you're failure your success I like you I hate you uh, and they put you in boxes and they you know they become biased about you and all the prejudices and you name it and you experience that every day so you have to protect your soul from inside 
you have to leave your soul intact you keep it intact you, kn you, not, you, you do not let anybody abuse your soul anybody underline your beauty as a human being it's not an easy thing to do because people sometimes are ruthless right but you protect yourself shield a shield I had a brother I have a brother God bless him when we were kids he had I mean sure you'll understand this he had this sign you know the sign some some of you will, will will laugh now you know what this sign is about so every time somebody said him something nasty he would do this sign I used to ask him we were kids what are you doing he said this sign everybody everything you're telling me comes from here and goes back to you so nothing is happening to you to me so people will be hard to him and he's just doing that and smiling because that's his um, childish mechanism of protecting yourself but if you leak look deep inside it's not really childish he just find his found his way to keep his soul intact and that's what you should do thank you so much for uh, replying to me i personally believe that when someone know himself his weaknesses and his strength nobody can destroy that because he will be building a strong foundation Yes. Plus, if we have a sense of purpose and meaning in our life, nothing can destroy us. Yes. I don't know if you agree with I me agree. on that. I agree with you, but, but, but with just a small remark is that the journey of knowing yourself is a continuous, long and deep journey. And sometimes you need help because you think you know yourself. And you can spend your entire life and many lifetimes without even scratching the surface of who you are. So it's important that you take any op every opportunity to work on yourself, on your self-development through reading, through you know attending ex seminars, uh, therapy, you know whatever all these kinds of educational things, so that you get to know yourself more, and whatever you said becomes deeper and has more meaning and value. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. On behalf of thank HR you. professionals, I would thank like you. to thank you for this wonderful session. Uh, HR professionals, please let's say it loudly. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm delighted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Take care of yourself and take care thank of your. You and you too. You too. And and take care of your soul, your spirit from inside. That's what matters. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye.